Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by on my channel. And it feels like it's been a minute since I made a LumaFusion tutorial. So today we are going to learn how to do an end screen. Let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Knowing that I want to keep this for all future projects, I'm going to make a template out of it and I'm going to name this project end screen. So we need a jumping off point. Let's hit the plus sign and choose main title. Now the end screens are 20 seconds, so let's drag this out to be 20 seconds. Now we have to decide what it is we're envisioning for our end screen. I took a screen grab of one of my other end screens, so I'm just going to bring it here and drop it. I am going to hit the pencil so that we can edit that. And what I'm going to do with the blending is just bring it down to about 50% so that we can see what we're working with here. We're going to use this screen capture as a reference point for building this end screen. So what we're going to do is edit this title, hit the pencil to get into edit. First thing we want to do is make sure we're in the fonts is get rid of the writing. We don't want anything like that there. Hit the plus sign. Let's go to shape. And I'm going to keep that rectangular shape. And now I'm going to scale this down a bit because I want this peeking out just beyond these boxes. Not too much, just a little bit. That looks good. And I'm just going to duplicate that and move it to the other square by hitting the second plus sign. Now I'm going to hit the plus sign and choose shape again because this time we're going for an oval. And I just want this peeking over my picture. Okay, that looks good. So now what we can do is just get this out of the way. So this is what we're working with from this point on. Let's go back into the edit. Now we have to make a decision. What else do we want to have going on with the end screen? We don't want it too busy. You know, I might just go ahead and hit plus, add shape, and let's add bars to the top. Duplicate that again and pull it down here. And of course, all of these elements can be any color that you want. They can all be white, they can all be red, blue, or they can be a variety of colors. There's nothing saying that you have to have the exact same colors. I think that's about it there. I Some of you might choose to, let's say, uh, do another rectangle. Maybe you'd like to spin it. And instead of having bars at the bottom, maybe you just want corners to show. You can pull down the opacity, double that up, bring that to the top. However it is that you want to make yours look, you can do. Now let's say that I wanted to have all of these things glowing around the elements. Let's go to color and effects, water droplet. Now let's go to Gaussian blur. I could pull that up to about, I think about a 10 is going to make it look good. Now let's go over to the next icon and I'm going to drop a, a bloom on here. I think it's called a bloom. Yeah. Oh, bloom big. Let's pick a bloom big. And that is going to add another element of making it look like it's glowing. From here, I would add my overlays. And I'm just going to pull my overlay right on top of that. This is just something that I made with an RGB light and a prism. I'll cut that there. Now I want to go into these overlays and edit them into screens so that we can see both things. There we go. And as the end screen is playing, that is going to be in the background. I think that's going to look pretty cool. So what would be the next step? Let's go ahead and choose some music. So let's go up here and go to Story Blocks. Now I know not everyone has a Story Blocks subscription, so I'll just go ahead and, and pick something that's free. Let's hear what this sounds like. Oh. That's perfect. So let's go all the way to the end of 20 seconds and we are going to cut that and get rid of it. Now let's highlight the audio and hit the pencil so that we can edit it. Now let's go to about 16 seconds, drop a keyframe right there, go to the end and pull your volume down to zero. You see how that line bends up and down? That's going to fade out the music perfectly with the end of the end screen. And she's going to fade out. We can get rid of this now. We don't need that. 
The next thing that we want to do is, you don't have to, I don't usually do it, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna add some writing to this as well. So let's hit the plus sign and choose overlay title. And we will stretch this out for the entirety of the video. Now let's go in there to edit it. The reason that I didn't include it with the original line is because I don't want it to be Gaussian blurred. If you want it nice and sharp, it has to be on its own layer. So let's go here, um, tap to subscribe, choose the font that you want to use, make it the size that you want. You might choose the font with an outline, just so that when this is rolling past, you can still see it. Let's duplicate that, move it over to the side, check out this video. Duplicate that again. Check out my playlist. And there is our end screen. Let me just get rid of these corners because I don't care for them. Is it this one? Yeah, I don't care for those. I'm just going to leave it like this. Actually, you know what? I mean, that looks sharp too. You don't have to have the bloom big or the Gaussian blur if you don't like it, but I think it might wind up looking nice. And if not, you can always dump it. You can always edit this. So what I'm envisioning with the end screen is that as your other video is ending, it's fading out and then this is going to fade in. So let's go to the very beginning here and we are going to fade this in. So let's go to frame and fit, go to blending. We're all the way at the very beginning. Bring this down to zero, drop a keyframe, advance one second, and then bring it up to 100% and that will fade in nicely. Now go to the text, pencil to edit it. Once again, we're going to go to blending. We are going to drop a keyframe right there at one second because we're already going to be there. Now we back all the way to the very beginning and drop this down to zero. And that is just going to fade it in perfectly. So this is it. This is our template, our main template. We are done. Now we want to attach this to the back of an existing project. So we hit the little checkbox. And now we are going to use copy and paste. So go to the clipboard and hit copy. Go to your other project. And I think I dumped the end screen out of this one. Yep, so let's go to the clipboard and hit paste. Now make sure you're at your exact spot in the timeline where you want to drop this in because if you're not there and you hit paste it's just going to drop it wherever you're at. Make sure that you're fading out your video before this fades in. And I think that comes together really nicely so let's go to YouTube. If you're on an iPad hit the three circles. Go down to request desktop site. Hit your picture and choose Creator Studio. Go to your videos. And let's go to this video. Hit end screen. So here are the elements that you can work with. And like I said, you can even add more than that if you want, but too busy it won't look good. So what I'm going to do is I can easily say import from last video, but I want to build this with you guys. So let's do I want this in the middle. Now this is going to help you line everything up. You see those grid marks that come up? That's going to allow you to center everything perfectly. There we go. Now we're going to add another element. This was a playlist, so we have to pick the playlist that we want. I will do, uh, of course, LumaFusion tutorials. Let's add another element. You hit the plus sign and choose video. And I'll just choose most recent upload. And now grab this same thing. It's going to allow you to center it. Boom. So now everything is centered. You hit save and that adds your end card. <laughs> so what I was saying before I forgot to turn this microphone on was that I filmed this video three times. Mm -hmm. Three times. The first time I looked at the overhead camera shots and I'm like, oh, it looks 
looks fuzzy. So maybe that paper like is not the best thing to have on an iPad when you're doing overhead camera shots. I don't know. I have to wait and see. The second time I didn't hit record on my overhead camera like an idiot. So the third time, hopefully it looks good. I don't know. I, whatever it looks like, it's just going to be, it's just going to be however it turns out. I'm sorry. Thank you guys for being so patient with me through all of the microphone reviews, but people keep sending me microphones and I, I feel guilty. Like I just can't let them sit around here. I feel like I have to review them. As a matter of fact, I still have two more microphones to review, but I figured I better drop a tutorial in the meantime, because I'm just going to have an all out mutiny on my hands. If I don't, I really wanted to thank you guys for being so nice and sweet to me in the comment section. It really does mean a lot. Thank you very much. So until next time, Wear your sunblock and call your mom and dad just to say how much you love them. Because nobody's going to love you the way they do.